And my grandmother would make things together. I used to adore learning her craft. Now my skills are much more advanced, but the principle is the same. Creating something unique for those you love. And that is why I love Creator. I know their tools and materials are some of the best on the market and so inspiring. It takes me back to the childhood joy of creating. Join me, Carly Duff, for Creator on Creating Craft. Wherever you are, stay connected with Ideal World. Watch our amazing shows on your TV, use the website to see our great products, or check out our fabulous offers via your mobile and shop on the go. You'll find everything you need at the push of a button. Ideal World, connected to you. Good morning and welcome to Create and Craft. My name is Nigel May and this lady, of course, is the fabulous Jenny Raymond. I normally don't, te normally don't kiss my teacher, but hey, this morning mm. I will do. Oh. How are you, oh, teach? Nigel. I'm very well, Nigel. So yeah. I'm very excited about this show because I've never been in the quilting classroom hey, before. No, it's my first time. No, it's, it's an easy job for you, mate. I know, I just cuddle off in a moment. I have to do all the hard grass. I should be sat on a cottonry yeah. in the corner having yeah, a lovely time, no problem. Yeah. Uh, but for people that don't know about the show, what's it all about? What's right. the quilting what classroom for? What we're doing for? today, Qu quilting classroom is when everybody vanishes but me and you actually get a proper lesson. So we're going to make a cushion. Well, within the hour, we're going to make the cushion. Well, there are stage samples. So I mean, a few sort no. of fast forwards. Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, unlike Barbara Gray's classroom, you can't do it along with me. No. But press record and start recording now. All yeah. right. It makes sense, it doesn't makes it? Sense. Then, of course, you can slow it down. You can pause me. And you can turn me off. Which, believe me, you can never do in the flesh. So no, you see. <laughs> no, you see, it doesn't work. So it's like, you can do that. no, no, come back. Uh, okay, well, we've got a few items to yes, actually mention have. before yes. I toddle off. So this is what we're going to be making. Very mm -hmm. excited. But, of course, we need a pattern, don't we? Uh, now, this is our fabulous, this is our first item here. Uh, now, Jenny, let's talk about these to begin with. What are these, my lovely? Right, these are templates designed by a lass called Nancy Zeman. Right. And Clover have marketed them, so they're good quality super templates. Now, they do two designs. What one of them does, and that's the one here that's the half hexagon shape, it takes the steam, the sting, the problem out of sewing hexagons together. Are they usually, normally quite problematic yes, though? because okay. of something called a Y seam or an inserted seam, call it what you like. It's right. a nasty, awkward junction. This, I think, is a really neat template. It takes the whole, whole problems away. And it does four different sizes. Now, not so only one, you two, get three, that, four, yeah. but you get the other template, which does shapes that look a little bit like the one I've got on. So again, here. there's four shapes here, Jenny, isn't it? The, sort of the yes. red, the orange, the green, and the blue. And they do shapes like this. Let's show them what they look like. Oh, I like that. So That's lovely. It's a very different shape. That's fabulous. And again, you, there are, there's no hard sums with this. You don't even have to fuss about your seam allowance. As long as you do the same seam allowance, because they're all the same shape, you can stitch them together. So for a beginner, this is ideal. You can draw on the pattern, cut with scissors. You don't need rotary cutters. Obviously, it's faster with. And what I particularly liked was the instructions are good. They oh, come in four languages. Loads well, and loads of instructions. Well, it's the same thing four times. Oh, it's for your foreign friends languages. as well. Yes. Now, let me so find the English one. The English one's here. There you go. And what I thought was particularly good about is it does take you through the instructions very, very clearly. And it gives you all the possibilities for design play. So it moves on and it goes through how you can lay your hexagons out. Because I went for the simple, simple one. But you could have arranged these in a variety of completely different ways. And then it deals with the tumbling block on the back. So instructions are great, which is why there's no PDF for this class, because so it was pointless for me to rewrite Nancy Demon's words no, when no it's point. on the pattern. So, words and pictures there for you, plus yep. the templates that you need to create your cushion and more. Uh, £24.29 is the price from that one, 274754. Uh, Jenny, we need some fabric, of we course, do. don't we? We do, Jenny. And these are Teach, we need some fabric. Uh, what have we got? You've got four fat quarters, a fat quarter being a quarter of a yard. Can I open a fat a quarter? Square. Yes. Okay, so you're so going to get four this size. Chopped in half. And there's enough fabric there, our Nigel, to make the cushion, okay, this sample here, and indeed stripy piping. Oh my gosh, because we have got a piping coming up as we well. We have indeed. And so this is a good price, 11 69 for four fat yes, quarters. Super, absolutely fantastic. Do four fat quarters make one fat hole? One fat metre, yes. They, they would, do. wouldn't yes, they? Yes, that's hole with a work. 
Yeah, with not a W. Not well, with two, <laughs> not without Jenny. Yes, indeed. Uh, so if you'd like to go for that one, eleven pounds. And, see, bad teacher. Uh, eleven pounds and sixty-nine pence is your price there now, on that one. Ah, this, this is, is this piping. is wonderful, woofly, worst. Love, look, look at the look at the piping on this cushion. So this is for around the outside this here. Is yeah. A, uh, because if you pipe your cushion, it takes it out of the amateur status into the professional one, and this is going to give you really good, thick, wonderful. Piping. It makes a feature. Yes, it does. It finishes it off properly, it doesn't it? And it's fusible. You don't need any machines for this. You just iron it on. It's okay. fusible. Now, I'm going to show a variety of ways of, of and talk about piping, but this, if you want really good thick piping, and there's enough there to do the cushion and the bit left over. So if you are a bit trepidatious, a person, you make a mistake, it doesn't matter because you've got a bit extra. You've got a bit extra. So the price yeah. on that one, thirteen forty-nine, is the perfect price to actually finish your cushion professionally, yes. isn't it? Yes, Makes it nice it. to sit on. Or if you like me before the show this morning, turn into a cat and padding <laughs> away. Uh, now, obviously, we need some zips as well, don't we? We have three of these. These are the big zips. These Look at are these. 30 centimetres or 12 inch. Now, the nice thing about a 12 inch zip is anything up to an 18 inch cushion, you can still get a pad inside because you just squash it through the hole. And the zip is put in the back of your cushion, and that will again finish your cushion off professionally. I'm afraid I do not fuss about putting zips in the piping because okay. that's a nightmare. When you've made a cushion, I it's got like a it front. Then, it's easy. Well, the reason for putting it there is so that when it's on the sofa, it's got to have that much of it resting against the sofa or else it'll fall off. So you can't see the zip if you get it on the sofa the right way up. Do you know, I never thought about that. So that's why you don't put the zip in the middle, you put it down a bit. How clever, because I would just thought, right, have cushion sit on it. But no, there's, there's an art, yes. isn't there, and as if well? If you've only got one side to the cushion, because you, who wants a two-sided cushion? What a waste of a lot of effort when it's you can't true. see the back. Yeah, it's true. Then put the zip in the back, much easier. And with these as well, I mean, I know we're talking about cushions this morning, but you can have these for dresses or for yes. skirts, things yes. like that and as well, can't you? Yes, and of course, being cream, they'll go with absolutely anything. And if you do the zip my way, what I'm going to show you, you won't, doesn't really matter about the colour. There you go. Learn along with our zippy, uh, zippy Jenny this morning. Uh, £6.29 bench price on those brand new today. Two nine. One oh nine five. Now, of course, we need expertise time yes. and time again because, yes, you can have this show once every few weeks, but wouldn't it be nice to have Jenny in your home in book form all the time? This is Tucks Textures and Pleats. Now, we were having to browse through this this morning, Jenny, because uh, some of the things that you're going to be doing this morning are featured in here, aren't At they? The back. This book homes in on small projects to, to do stop. with twiddling, fiddling. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There's an awful lot of stuff in it. It's a huge and amount. you're coming up there. Right, okay. So here's putting piping in. And I'm going to demonstrate how to, so it'll be a really good reminder. Another reason why there wasn't a PDF, you know, why do a PDF when I've already written it? And then over the pages, you've got putting in, can you flip over? There you go. Right. You've got putting in ruched frills, you've got putting in all sorts of other frills, and you've got putting a zip in. If you go a bit further over, we've got putting a zip in the back, frilling in there, frilling in there, and here's putting a zip in. So everything that you need to know is in this book. All the information from today's class is in here. So Plus if you want to add that to the mix, it makes yes. perfect sense. Now, obviously, with the classroom, I'm assuming it's the same as any other show. If you want three items or more, you save on your PMP. So six ninety nine PMP if you go for three items or more, whether you're ordering on the phone lines oh nine oh five six four eight oh four eight oh, or of course on the website. Let my unruly classmates tell you about that. www. Greg Greg Craft. Craft. Yes, oh, they're quite good this morning, aren't they? But, well, if they hadn't have been, you'd have kept them behind after school, I you see. Yes. Given them lines, yes. put them in yes. detention. Round the back of the bike. Chair. You'd have hovered with some piping. Know what I'm saying, Jenny? Mm. Uh, mm. Right, now we've all nice got... They are too. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's supposed to be punishment, Jenny, not pleasure. Oh, right. Uh, right, the next <laughs> one for you. This is our fabulous accessories kit that we have here. Uh, we start with our quilting pencil pack. Yes. Why not ordinary pencils? Because you've got three different colours there that will go on different fabrics. See what you like, you need medium dark on light medium dark fabrics and you were a template marking pencil because sometimes you want to make your own templates and that's the only pencil that will mark on templates plus you've got an air erasable a disappearing this is this is like the james bond the pens that's you can right. write secret messages it goes i love it see? it does disappear why do we want them to disappear so it doesn't leave a mark on your cushion well done thank you that's good i'm Top learning marks. right uh, what about this then our fabric right, wrappers are things to stop your rulers from sliding Okay. Sometimes templates, because they're acrylic and got flat bottoms, you know, oh, to have a flat bottom, that will stop it from sliding along the material. So you don't put this on the fabric, you put no, this you on, put the, on the ruler. The ruler. Okay. Yes, right. uh, and then finally and we have these, your flat heavy pins, which yes. you adore, don't you? I like that. In my opinion, they are my best favourite pins, because I like them because of the length, I like them because they're flexible, I like them because you can see the colour, and I like them even more these days, because if you have a, um, one of those permanent ink pens, you can actually write on the pins, L, R, U, D. Up, down, left, right. Well done. Yay. So if you're piecing, 
you could actually put the pins in and the pins told you which bit went where and how. And the fact they go flat as well means yes. that when everything is on oh, your work surface, surface, it's not lumpy dumpy. In the States, I saw these pins with the L-R-U-D printed on them for a fortune. And then I thought, well, these pins, you can just write, write it on. Write them on yourself? Yes. See, I love it. Teachers economising. Uh, <laughs> 9 pounds and 89 pence is the price for those as well. So you've seen the items there that Jenny is going to be using. So I tell you what, Jenny, I'm toddling off yep. and I shall see you towards the end of the show. Right. Have fun, teach. Yep. Thank Bye. you very much indeed. I'm off to play. Right. Huh? You've been abandoned with me. Are we sitting comfortably? Now, I have rumours that there are some of you out there in your gym jams. I trust you're going to get dressed later. Right. You are here in front of me to do a cushion. Cushion. And as you've seen, we're using the Clover One Patch, Grandmother's One Patch pattern, which actually does do two completely different designs. And on the 11 o'clock show, I will come to using the second design. But for now, I'm just going to use this hexagonal one. You do have a variety of different sizes. If you get it around the right way, then you can actually see it. You start off with small, medium, large, and extra large hexagons. I'm choosing to use the smallest one here. If you wanted to, you could, of course, make up the design in any size you like. And one of the neat things about this entire template is it's taking the steam out of the piecing junction that there always is in hexagons. When you're piecing hexagons together ordinarily, if you've got whole hexagons, this junction here is, can be a nightmare. It's often known as a Y seam or an insertion technique. And believe you me, this is a neat way to get rid of that problem because you're making half hexagons that just fit together in long lines. Right, how do you do it? Because I'm using the smallest template, you'll have to cut from your fabrics a two and a quarter inch strip. And this is where use of the mat and the ruler and the cutter is paramount. So from the fabrics, and you may choose to use a variety of different colors, you may choose to arrange your autumnal shades in a different way. I'm just going to show you how to cut strips and how to cut the pieces. So from my fabric, I'm going to cut a two and a quarter inch strip. So putting the ruler with the two and a quarter inch line on the edge of the fabric, cut up the side of it. Because I'm idle, I'm afraid I like to cut my fabrics in lots of different layers at the same time. So I will very often sort of layer up the various colors, putting either right sides or wrong sides together. It really doesn't matter. You could, if you want to, actually have four layers of fabric. The choice is yours. But if you're feeling a bit worried, just have a single layer. It'll take you a little bit longer, but why not? I'm going to cut two layers because I'm feeling bold this morning. Right, with the template. Now, here again, you have a choice. There's no reason why, if you're worried about cutting this with a rotary cutter, you can't draw up the edge of the template and use a pair of scissors to literally cut up the drawn line. You know, use our good old fist guard scissors. Or, if you wish to use the rotary cutter, just cut carefully. What Nancy Zeman has done is she's put a pink line and defined the different templates, the different sizes, with a color around the edge. If you use the rotary cutter and the color starts to vanish, you've cut bits off your template and perhaps you did ought to buy another one. But if you're careful, it doesn't happen. Move number one is place the template on the scraps of fabric. Using the rotary cutter, cut very carefully up the side of the template. Remember, you are not cutting any of the pink stuff off. If you're worried, draw a line cut with a pair of scissors. Now, rather than do any strange cutting, like cutting towards me or away from me, it's easy if you just simply flip the fabric over, replace the template, comsa, that's French for like this, and then cut up the edge up here. Now, when it comes to cutting, you're going to have to cut a variety of different colors. And the numbers you'll want is this. I've laid it out for you on the board. Let me just dump that on the floor for later. Should you and your machine not be recording at this moment in time, and should you need to go and see this again, I've put it on the front page of my website, jennyraymond.com, so the layout is there. And basically, you're going to need to cut, if you want your cushion to look exactly the same as mine, you will need to have two dark brown ones in the center, and you'll need 12 of the yellowy ones and 16 of these and they get laid out in this order. 
And what I am finding these days is what it makes a really good idea is to lay them out in the order. The order is also described in the pattern. So don't think, oh my goodness me, I've got to make a rapid drawing of this and sit there get all worried. It's in the pattern. I've just copied the pattern. But an addition to the pattern was I found very useful was actually to put labels on all the pieces. Now number four's got, there it is, there's number four. You haven't gone very far. I found labeling the pieces with a sticky label was quite a good idea. You could write on the pieces, but the sticky label was useful because when you stitch one row together, you could move the labels and use the labels for the entire thing. So lay out the pieces. Now, because I only had one set of the fabrics, I had to do another, here's one I did earlier, sample in a different color. But of course, you could do the cushion in a different color, although I must confess, I think the autumnal one is absolutely cracking. When you've laid out all the pieces, they get sewn together in a certain way. And this is something that it's well worth watching carefully. The pieces go together to form a long line. You will put them right sides together. Coming to the sewing machine, now I'm using the little Husqvarna 100. And it's a cracking little machine because it's really good for carrying to class. It has a carrying handle. It's nice and light. It does all that I would need in a class situation. It has a variety of different stitches. You have control over your stitch length and your stitch width. It comes with a patchwork foot if you want one, or you have the ability to move the needle off center to one side. It has a needle threader. It even has a pressure on the presser foot uh, knob so that if you're going over thick heavy jeans that's fine you can lower the feed dog so it'll do free motion all in all it's a cracking little machine right I've already preset my needle by shifting it over with the stitch width to a measurement of 5.5 from this side of the foot so my needle is a quarter of an inch from this edge of the presser foot putting your two pieces together now the important part about this thing is to put the two pieces together so that they align in a V shape. Can you see, I'm not putting them so they're exactly raw edge tip to tip together, so they fit like that. You've got to have it shifted down a bit. And the trick is to make certain that where they cross here, that's where your seam allowance goes in, all righty? So seam allowance, that should be a quarter of an inch. So pop them together. If you wanted to hold them together, one of those nice flat pins really does work remarkably well for holding it together. Proceed to sew down the edge, trying to get through that little indentation. You, of course, will have it much easier because you'll be able to sit down at home and have the sewing machine in front of you. So you have to forgive me with any little wobbles on the machining. When you come to the pin, please do not sew over the pin because you can sometimes drag it down into the innards of the machine. Proceed down in orderly fashion, right to the very end there. I'll just hold my things there. Now keep going, that's foot control. No, that's right. And as ever, I like to sew onto a small scrap. And you might have noticed the small scrap was already waiting for me as I started stitching. This is the good old thread saver, and more details you'll find in the Tux, Texas and Pleats book. Right, having sewn down the edge there, this is where it will pay you to press that seam open and flat. And a really good iron for pressing the seam open and flat is the good old clover iron. Now, this is not on, I can assure you. I've not passed it over the seam with it in my hand. So press the seam open and flat. And notice that when you look at the shape, the sides are completely straight. That is because I laid them out in the right place. Now, to make the different lengths of strips, you're going to need to sew six of these together in a row and believe you me that is where <laughs> numbering them really did work i actually sewed them together sorry it's five together not six i can't count just as well i don't teach mathematics i stitched them together in pairs the pairs together and put one on the end when you lay out the design the outside two rows are the same, the next two rows are the same, and the ones in the middle are the same, and it really doesn't matter which way up you put them, they are all exactly the same. So you're going to make six rows of the pieces in the color arrangement you have chosen. When you've done the six rows of the pieces, they get sewn together. And what I tend to do when I sew them together is sew them together in sets of two. 
Now, the nice thing, when you sew them together, you haven't got anything to line up whatsoever other than the seams. There's no funny piecing. You just take the two pieces, put them right sides together, line up your seams, and stitch right from one end to t'other. So off we go down the edge. Let's find the hook and drill. So literally, line up the seams. And the nice thing about this, because I cut the fabric from my strips across the material, there's a little bit of give. So I can, if necessary, just tweak it a bit. And of course, if you wanted to, there's no reason why you can't pin all the junctions together. So literally, sew down, and you would sew three sets of two. One of the things I really admired about Nancy Zeman's pattern, I must confess I took my hat off to her, is she presses her seams open and flat. Now there's this great argy-bargy in the quilting world. Do you press them to one side or do you press them open and flat? I personally go for pressing them open and flat most of the time because I think it gives a better piece of work. So you're going to sew the bits together all the way down, matching up the seams. When you've done two together, you'll repeat with the next two strips and gradually sew the entire panel together. And it's going to look something like this. Okay, just onto my little bit again. There's the scissors. There we go. Find the bit at the end there. That's right. And on to that. Right, stop. So your panel is three strips like that stitched together. And again, it sometimes pays to number them going across. So do do the numbering. I found it was invaluable. Once you've done the numbering, what it will then pay you to do is to put another two and a quarter inch strip down opposite sides. Because you need to square it off a bit. And having put opposite strips down opposite sides, this is where you will probably want to trim the block. Back to the big mat. Now, I have to confess, I'm a fan of the big mat. And this is where the big ruler is so very useful. You can lay the ruler on the top. And what I'm going to do now is put the ruler so that the ruler is two inches away from the top of these points here. And then I'm going to trim it off. Trim it off there. Turn it round and trim it off the other way. And then what I'm going to do after that, because that still isn't quite a square, and I'd like to have a square cushion, there's another number four from somewhere, is I'm going to add one final strip to either end of the block. And just for the sake of ease, I've cut another two and a half inch strip, two and a quarter inch strip, sorry, one one end, one the other end. Having done that, you will then square it off. And if you are going to square something off, use of the big cutting mat is really good. Apologies, by the way, for using that fabric. I'd run out of the pink dots. The trouble is one stash gets smaller and smaller. Once you have squared the cushion off and added the border, what I did then was mounted it onto the Hobbs batting. And the Hobbs batting is really rather nice to work on. It's nice to touch and it makes a very nice cushion cover. On when it was on the Hobbs batting, and I simply pinned it on, on the corners, I sewed on the machine inside the center here, using matching thread. I went outside the edge of the hexagons. I then went inside the edge of the main block, outside the edge. And then before I piped it, I ran the zigzag right round the very edge to anchor the fabric to the wadding. Because if you don't do that, when you add the piping, something can shift. Now, piping. I feel very strongly that piping actually professionally finishes a cushion off. And this particular piping that we've got on the show is a wonderful, great, thick, <laughs> woofly. Well, it, it, it just is. It's a wonderful, luxurious piping. And it's not a piping I've often used. And I was most delighted with the effect of the piping because it gave a very good solid border round the cushion. How do you use it? The piping requires a 2 and 5 eighths inch strip. That's what it says on the instructions. You actually can get away with a 2 and a half inch strip. These strips have to be cut across the fabric from one side to the other, from selvage to selvage. Now, if you're not sure about what is the side of the fabric, the selvage, because you cut it off, 
you can either tell by stretching the material, it will always stretch considerably more on the weft, that's across the material, notice the stretch, that's going from weft to white across the fabric, and it won't stretch so much down the warp, this is a tight, taut part of the fabric. If you can't feel by stretch, I don't think this will work on air, but you can tell by twanging it. If you twang the fabric one way, I hold it to my mic, it might. Can you hear the difference in note? There's quite a difference in note. The lower note will always be across the fabric, going weft to white with the stretchy bit. And that's the way you cut your strips. Having cut your strips, just join them together as straight seams. Don't must mess around with anything on the bias. The piping is then laid inside the fabric, folded over and back to the good old clover iron because this is absolutely ace at just literally ironing the fabric along there. Now, if you've got the Tux Text and Pleats book, I don't use this method of doing piping. I'm going to show you the other method, but you don't get such wonderful scrunchy piping but you do have to have the book. When making the piping, you will need sufficient cord, and I'm using a medium cord, to just go along the cushion. You never need any more. Um, I tend to be one of those people that if six is good, seven's got to be better. A bit like husbands, you know, if one is good, why not have four? So, that surprised you all, didn't it, if you don't know? Measure the cord across the fabric, like that. No more is required. For the piping that I'm going to do, I'm using a one and a half inch strip of fabric. And again, you would join it together with a straight cut join across the middle. This is where, on this little machine, you will have to change your presser foot to the zip foot. The feet literally pull off one and you can slot on the other very simply. So slot on the other, let's get it in the right place. And I'm going to put the zip foot on so that the, there we are needle is on this side and the foot is on that side that's absolute twaddle just replay that cancel that folks ignore that bit of the video <laughs> it goes on the other way <laughs> i was thinking about it i thought there's something very strange about this can't see to put it on let's get this in the right place it's because i've not got my glasses there we are right having put all right action replay you can now return to recording the foot on i'm going to move the needle and you can move the needle with the stitch width right to the very edge of the presser foot. Keep on going, that's it. Once you've got it on the edge of the presser foot, to make the piping, I'm going to increase the stitch length, so up the stitch length. So I've got maximum stitch length, and I've moved the needle right over to the other side. Once you've done that, take the piping cord. Lay the piping cord down the fabric, and the trick is to leave a bit. And I do this trick whether I was using the fusible piping, whether I was using any form of piping, is leave a bit of fabric. Fold the fabric over the piping cord. Using the longest stitch length on your sewing machine, you are going to wobble your way down the edge of the cord, keeping the two layers of the fabric together. And all you're aiming to do is to get the zip foot running along the side of the piping. And you just keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. Now we have had, and I'll show you on the 11 o'clock show, something called the piping wizard. Because if you're making piping this way, but you want to have it cut narrower, the piping wizard, which we'll talk about later on, actually is quite a useful tool. So that you can find on the website. It's there if you wish to buy it. And that's quite good for trimming your piping to the correct size. For the cushion cover, one and a half inches is fine. I don't need to worry about it. But if you're doing something precision, then use that piping with it. Right, and you will proceed sewing all the way down until you reach the end. I'm just doing a short length because you really don't want to watch me actually doing the piping. Okay, and keep going till you get to the very end. Right, let's just cut the threads off there. Nice little thread cutter on the side of that machine. Okay, here's one what I did earlier. Let's get rid of all this stuff. You have no idea what the floor looks like at the back when I finish. Reminding you, the piping started off with, that's the right, the right end, there he is, a little bit of fabric and then started on the piping cord. Now, when it comes to applying it, I'm still going to use on the sewing machine the same long stitch. I'm not going to alter the stitch length because this is a holding operation. 
and there are some books that may well tell you that you can actually put the piping on the cushion and in the cord at the same time. I'm afraid you can't. Decide which is the bottom of your cushion, and I think on this cushion that'll be the bottom. You're going to start with the piping in the middle of the bottom of the cushion, and remember we've got that slightly strange end to begin with. Again, you start your stitching where the stitching started the first time, so shove it underneath the machine. I like to drop my needle down than I know I've grabbed it. Lower presser foot. You will find this much easier doing it sitting down. I've never actually done it standing up, so this is, you know, this is a first for me. You're going to proceed along, keeping the edges of the piping aligned with the edge of the cushion cover. And you want to stop, move all this stuff out of the way, because it'll just sweep it off. You want to stop about three inches from the end of the cushion side, about here. Using your scissors, and you want small sharp scissors, and this is where left-handed people sometimes find it easier because their right hand doesn't hit the machine. You're going to clip the fabric for the cord really well. And when you're using that wonderful big fat cord, clip it really well, but do not actually cut through the cord, just clip up to the cord. When you've clipped it really well, you're going to drift it round the corner in a nice, gentle arc. If you shove your piping into the corner like that, it's going to give you a funny sort of ear on your cushion. So we want a nice, gentle arc all round the edge. If it worried you about drawing a nice, gentle arc, then go and find a sort of small saucer or a cup or something, and using the marking pen, you can actually mark yourself gentle arcs on all of the corners, so that the corners of the cushion will be the same. I'm just going to guesstimate it for speed. Right, round the corner, round the corner, and you continue along the next side, keeping all the raw edges together. And remembering we're just using it as a holding operation, this. And I used one and a half inches for this piping. The lovely thick piping cord takes a two and five eighths, although you can get away with two and a half inch strip. Move me pins out of the way too. Stop about three inches from the corner, clip it. You're just going to have to sit and watch me do this because until I get to the end, I can't show you the magic way of joining the ends together. Round the corner, round the corner, here we go. And we're on to the next side. You can see how fast it is. And it's exactly the same speed whether you're using thick piping, thin piping. So zip a foot on, needle on the left-hand side, long stitch length because it's purely and utterly a holding operation. Stop about three inches from the corner. Clip well, do not cut through the cord or else you will have a problem. So you clip up to the cord, turn it round the corner, po possibly following that nice gentle arc. Round we go, round we go. And we're coming down the last side and nearly for the exciting bit, a bit like horse racing, into the finishing straight. Galloped all horses, down they went. One of the nice things about the sewing machine is it does have a speed control. You don't have to go at this like the clappers. You could slow it down. Up to the corner, cut. Round the corner, round the bend. Yeah, all right, I know I'm round the bend. All right, we can stop those cracks. Round we go, round we go, and we're nearly at the end. Oh, get excited at this point. Okay, how do you join the ends together? You join the ends together by folding this part of the raw end over, taking this end of the cord, and you want to cut this end of the cord so it's flush with, if I can get my fingers out of the way, it's flush with the little end we can see sticking up there. Now I put a bit of sellotape on mine, which I would remove, but it just sort of held the ends of the cords together and stopped it fanning out for the demonstration here. This piece of cord has to line up with the end of that piece of cord. And this is one of the few times in the life when left-handed people really do win. So cut it off. Keep your fingers crossed that the two bits of cord actually do line up. Raw edge gets folded over, cord gets laid inside. Fold that back over the top of it and proceed past. And this is where something like the bamboo skewer is really useful. So plod along there, keeping that holded. Held rather, holded. But I didn't speak English either. I don't speak English at times. And that is your piping on. Right, we have now piped a cushion, and you'll find all these instructions are very clearly written inside tucks, textures, and pleats. Put on the back and put a zip in. 
To make the back, you're going to need a strip of fabric that is the same width as your cushion cover and about two inches longer. Now, I'd run out of this lovely material, so I had to use some of my own stuff. So you want strip of fabric that is the same width as the cushion and about two inches longer. Press on the piece of fabric approximately four inches up one end. That's your pressing up the length. So we're not taking anything off the width of the material. This is where you will find it really useful with these marking pens because what we're going to do now, having pressed up about four inches from the bottom, is draw a line three quarters of an inch in from the fold. This is to give me enough fabric to make the seam to put the zip in. The line need only be long enough so that I come to either end of the zip. So if you lay the zip on top and just see the start and the end of the zip and draw your line accordingly. So the line just needs to go from the end to the top of the zip, from the other side to the bottom of the zip. Having drawn the line, all you now do is you sew along the drawn line. And fortunately, here's one I did earlier. And you sew along the drawn line from there to there. When you stitched along there, you take your scissors and you slit that fold, okay, all the way along. Back to the good old clover iron, if you lay the fabric out flat, open the seam here, you can, with the iron, and bear in mind I've not got it on my, it's not on, press that seam open and flat. Right. Having pressed it open and flat, we're going to, it'll look something like this. There we are. And it's at this stage now you're going to put the zip in. Right. Here's the zip. The zip head has to go in that way up, so the zip head's going in there. And if you lay the piece out in front of you so that the shorter end is away from you, this is the left-hand side. If you can't tell your left from your right, look at the back of your hands. Zip head gets tucked in like that. And all you need is two pins. You don't need any more than two pins. It's a magic way of putting a zip in. And all the instructions are in tucks, textures and pleats. Right, having popped the zip in, short section, left-hand side. Turn it over. Open the zip a fraction to the sewing machine. And now you're going to want the zip put on the other side of the machine. So other side. And again, you can move the needle over so it is nearer the edge of the presser foot. Take the zip. Pop it under there. And we're going to be starting on the shorter section. So under you go. And notice I've just got the zip undone a short distance. With the fabric actually level with the edge of the teeth, you're going to start your stitching about an inch or so down from the beginning. Again, I like to drop the needle in to hold it in place. Lower presser foot. Your stitch length will be back to the regular size stitch length, so regular stitch length. So literally, I don't know, inch or so, and then drop the needle down, slide the zip head past, if you can't get it quite past, then raise the presser foot, so slide the head past, re-lower that, and we're now off. Now it's easy peasy. All you're going to be doing now is keeping the edge of the fabric aligned with halfway along the teeth, all the way down here, all the way down here. That's it. So fa edge of fabric goes literally just in there, so halfway along the teeth. If you've got a zip with a nasty metal end, you've got to watch it when you come to the bottom. These zips are lovely because you can sew right across them without damaging the needle. Now, my seam on the initial journey out is quite close to the teeth. When you get to the bottom, drop your needle, raise the presser foot, swing the fabric round, sew back across the zip. There we go. And this time, you want to take a bigger seam. So I'm going for about a centimetre, nearly half an inch. And as I come back on the return journey, I'm going to very fractionally lap this fold over the one underneath, which will allow for when you put the cushion back on and the cushion gets stuffed in and the fabric stretches slightly, it won't part and show the fact you've got, you know, a bright green zip in a pale pink cushion. Keeping the fabric slightly overlapped on the first one and with a bigger seam, you're going to sew back. So keep on sewing, keep on sewing, keep on sewing. And you will find it easier sitting down and not doing it at a funny angle. Keep on sewing. So larger seam of about one centimetre. Fabric fractionally lapped over. 
up to almost the end. Now, as you approach the end, here is the zip head. Again, so one little bit further. Stop, drop your needle down, take the zip head, slide it past the foot. Does it get past there? If you can't get it past, then raise the foot and just slide it past. So on a fraction further, remember you've got two pins in there. So this is where you take the pins out, because if you don't take the pins out, you'll stitch up pin in place. So along to here, when you get to the end of the zip, or the end of the hole, needle down, turn it round, straight back across the zip again. You've got no problem with any funny little metal ends. Back to there. There we go. And return to the seam in the first place. Let's turn it round again, and then back to where you started. Let's put my needle in the right place. I got that caught in there? No, I don't think so. And then back to the right place. So, I shouldn't keep saying so, but I do do sewing. Here we have the zip put in. Right, these ends, what I will do with these ends is I will, and it's about the only time in my life, is I will pull them through to the back and knot them off. And I wasn't quite right on that because it's very hard to see on this machine. But you will pull them through. There is the zip, ready to be put on the cushion. Take your cushion front. Where is it gone to? There it is. The zipped back now goes onto the cushion front. Find where the join in the piping is. Pin the zipped back on. Okay. Now, when you come to pin it on, what I like to do is to level it off so it's nice and straight down the bottom here. It also pays to leave the zip partly open because otherwise it's almost impossible to turn it through. Pin the cushion back to the cushion front on all four corners and I pin them on on the outside of the piping. So it's lovely if you're using the really thick piping because you can really feel the edge. When it comes to sewing the back on, I will go round twice and I start sewing the back on here. I used to start in the corner here, and what happened sometimes was this slewed as it went round. If you feel you might want some more pins, well, you know, feel free to use more pins. It doesn't matter. I just happen to be idle. Let's put another one in there for good luck. Okay, we're now going to put the needle on the other side. So take the zip foot off and turn it round and pop it on the other side. Let's get it in the right place. There we go. And once more, you will have your stitch length at regular. I'm just going to use a longer stitch length in case... I'll pull the foot off now. Well done, Jennifer. In case I need to adjust it later. Let's get it in the right place. Ooh, there we go. Right. Get it put off. So longer stitch for me. You will use regular. Under we go. Start your stitching about here. Lower your foot down. Your needle wants to be hard up to the edge of the piping cord. So on this great little machine, move your needle right over. Hard up against the cord and you are going to sew round. Take the pins out when you get to the corner and what you're going to be doing now is really pushing hard up to that piping. And you might have wondered why there was slightly more wadding left and the reason for having slightly more wadding is it gives me something to hang on to as I come round. So push, 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 push up to that piping. Do not sew the other side of the piping. You can feel it. And that's why if you're a beginner, that lovely thick piping is wonderful because you just can't sew over it. Round the corner. Now you can see why we had a nice soft roundy corner. Up the next side. Along. Take the pins out. And you're pushing up to that piping. Push, push, push. That's it. I don't have to go quite as fast as this, but hey, come on, we've got to get this in in the classroom. And you're all wanting your breakfast. Round the corner, round the corner. Oops, Daisy. I think I might have just sewn over the piping in my field here around the corner. Round we go, round we go. And we're nearly there. And there's a corner here. Move the pin. That's it. Now, when I've gone round once, I will actually go round a second time. And when it comes to going round a second time, that is where you want to push and push and push to try and get really, really close to the edge of the cord. So go round a second time, and this time push, bit of effort, bit of welly, really push the cord up to the zip foot. I have to confess that on this little machine, you can get very nice and tight and close to the piping. On some machines, you can't. But on this little machine, you can get nice and tight and close. I won't go too far along, but I can show you what it will look like. 
Once you've gone all the way around for your second time, that is when you would take your scissors and you trim off all the rubbish. So cut off all the rubbish. And I would cut it back to about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the stitching, round about there. Something that people are a bit apt to do is they will zigzag over this. Well, don't, because it makes a very hard inside your cushion. So it's just cut the fabric off. I'm going to go no further than that because I'd like to show you what happens when you turn it right side out. So if we now turn it right side out, bear in mind you will have taken all the wonderful edges off. And there is our cushion with its piping on. And you can see, look, what a wonderful, neat job that machine does of the piping. And there it is, all ready to have a feather pad stuffed inside. When it comes to putting a feather pad inside it, you always want to have a pad that is one inch bigger than the cushion pad. And on the Ideal World, the Create and Craft website, you actually, actually, I'll get my teeth around straight, there actually are cushion pads, 40 centimeter ones. I had a look, and they will be wonderful. Now, I like to use feather pads, I have to confess, because I think they make a better cushion. One last little thing to explain to you is if you're going to wash your cushion cover, because probably you didn't pre-wash the fabrics, a quick tip, and again it's all in Tuck's Text and Pleats book, is to take the pad out, wash the cover in warm soapy water, roll the cover up in a towel to get rid of the extra moisture after you've rinsed it, put the pad back inside, and be it polyester or feather, sling the entire lot in the tumble dryer, and tumble dry the cushion on the pad. If you ain't got a pad, um, a tumble dryer, then washing line till damp, the fluff on the back there, and then pop it in the airing cupboard to dry it off. So there you are. That is a cushion from the Raymond Fingers. How good are you? Yeah, right. That was brilliant. Thank you. I've got to say, yeah. it's really comprehensive as well. I was yeah. sat up and I was thinking, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I know what to do now. Uh, yes, I feel I'm learning this good. morning. And good. hopefully many, many people out there are doing the same as well. Excellent. Uh, now, obviously, there are bits and pieces that you use there. Yes. So we should remind yes. people exactly what we've got. Because if you would like to make a fabulous cushion like that, well, you need the right bits and pieces. You have the perfect teacher. You have the perfect product. <laughs> uh, so, Jenny, come with me, darling. Uh, let's start with these fabulous templates. Yes. Because, oh, now, we've got I a few extra ones things. here. Haven't we? Here we are, darling. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, these... These two bits and pieces, I love it, an organised mess here, yeah. which is beautiful. Uh, what you can't organized. see is the floor no. as well. No, the, the floor is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, it's fabulous. Honestly, it's brilliant. When Jenny was in for a four-day deal, literally it was like this deep. It was like, honestly, we found, we found people under there after four days. We really did. You weren't supposed to notice. But it's true, I, I love it. Uh, so these are the perfect tools to make yes. something like this. Yes. Does it take away all of the problems? Because yes. obviously somebody like you, you are an expert, so you always know your, your cheats and your way around things. But something like this, even for a beginner, makes life so much easier, yes. doesn't and, it? And I think coming to that point about an expert, I take that on board very much because, yes, I do know what I'm doing, but I did read the instructions and I followed the instructions yes. completely because it's a new tool to me. So you did and it the way that everybody I else did was doing it. Yeah. I, because I'm critical, I went through the instructions and I knew what to look for to see whether she'd put that in, that I as a beginner would need to know that information yeah. and it's there. Because, I mean, the lady behind is Nancy Zeman. Nancy. I mean, she's, she's a big cheese, she's isn't she? Oh, you kowtow to Nancy. Even I curtsy to Nancy Zeman. Oh, well, like that. Absolutely. Nancy, if you're watching, good morning. Good morning this morning. Uh, uh, no, she's very nice. She has a, a show in the States. Um, but she's been working with Clover. So they are well made. I couldn't actually fault the templates at all. You get the two different shapes. You get this one, which is the half hexagon, which does that. And it's four half hexagons, isn't four it? Half because literally hexagons. you have the, the small one there, the red one. Yep. Then you have the orange, well, the orange bordered one there. Then we move on out to the green, green one. one. And then finally, of course, the whole thing is the big blue one. Yes. So it's the massive you see, one. So you could do a very quick quilt with it. It all work in the same way. Well, bedspreads, quilts, cushion it covers, pillowcases, table any, cloths, any runners, like you this. name it, you could do it. You could have a whole matching suite. You could indeed. I think it'd be lovely. Yes. <gasps> or you use the other template, which is the tumbling one, this one, because that does this shape. See, I love this. And what I did with love this... Love that fabric, Jenny. Was it, and gorgeous. they also have the templates, they have the half shape in too. So you don't have to have a whole one, you can actually square it off. Oh, so that's where we have like the dotted yes. lines down Both here. Both you have the half half hexagon and okay. the half tumbling block, or tumbler block, I believe she calls it. But what I did with this was I stitched two rows together and a plain strip at the bottom, made a pocket, 
and it actually sits underneath my sewing machine. So if you didn't have something like these templates, to make something like this would you'd be a lot of measuring and paper, drawing and etc. etc. Et so you'd have to be like yes. almost like your own quilting yes. scientist to you get it to work, yes. wouldn't you? You've got to do hard sums. And I think because it's the same shape, although she does say you've got to use a quarter of an inch, you don't. Any time you sew the same shape together, your seam allowance can be what you choose. It's when you start to sew a different shape to another shape that you've got to have the correct allotted seam allowance. So for a beginner, if you did half an inch, you just end up with something much smaller. Yes. You can do it by hand, you can do it on the machine. It doesn't need any tools other than that because you could then work with scissors and a pencil and you could actually take that on holiday, a bit of fabric, pair of scissors and you can come well, up Well, you could be it. out on your balcony, glass of wine in one hand yes. and your template school for run. the other. You know, you can cut the pieces out, you take them on the school run, sit there and sew them by hand. Yeah, it's true. Do you know, I could have done it in the 40 minutes I was watching you, couldn't I? I should have given you some work to do. I could admit, well, I was watching you, I've got to say, I was, I was in <laughs> awe of wasn't. teacher. He'd actually got his head down. That's a lie, I was watching We've you. We've got all these cushions here. I know, I, I, could, well, I, I didn't have the one to lie on, did I? A cushion fest, That's right. a fiesta of cushions, <laughs> a cornucopia of cushions. Uh, all of the cushions that we see here, Jenny, as well, I mean, they're all beautiful. They're all eclectic. They're all different, but they all look really expensive. And if you go to certain shops, I mean, especially I was thinking like the boutique sort of Cotswoldian yeah. shops, yeah. they'd cost a fortune, wouldn't well, they? those all came, can we come to these ones? These all come from the book. Oh, look at these designs. And um, the nice thing about working in one colour is that you, it's inoffensive. It can go for absolutely anywhere. It's got a whisker on it. A whisker on it. I'm going to say, I'm going to do this now as well, because you've got one on you, Jenny. Have I? Yes. Oh, there well. you go. Either that or you're molting. Either that or you've got a straight chest tear, and I'm assuming not. <laughs> um, this is from the books, of course. So it is your fabulous, your tucks and your textures and your pleats that we have for you there. Um, it's such a good book. It really is. I mean, you are a, a fantastic teacher, but I'm also a great authoress in the fact that you put everything that is in your brain in these books, yes. but it actually comes out in layman's terms. Mm. It's not hard to follow. No, no. You, you just do what the words say. It's like follow and learn. Uh, so if you'd like to make something like this, do go for the book. Thirty pounds and forty-nine pence is the price. Which is uh, cheaper than it actually is. Its retail price is fourteen fifty. Really? So they're getting a deal. Well, also this this show, I've got to say, I mean, if people were having workshops with you, I won't ask the price, but obviously, I mean, that would be, I would imagine, like a pretty penny because your yeah. expertise is great. Yeah. So to actually have these shows and you know record them, as Jenny said, watch them back. Mm. It's like having your own little compilation of now. That's what I call Raymond, isn't it? Really. Mm. So it's like you can watch them back time mm. and time again. Mm. Uh, also, of course, you can watch them on our website. Yes, you can, and yes. it works. Well, look, there you yes. are. Um, I did find it doesn't work in every single um, internet provider. Okay. In, in mine, it doesn't work. But if I use Mozilla, I can watch all the shows. Do you know what? We're going to tell the IT people that, because we're yep. going to get that sorted then, yes. Jenny, quite yes, frankly. Yes, it doesn't work on mine. You need to go up there waggling yep. your piping at them again yes. and say, right, oh, let's get it sorted. Waggle your piping. And, and we have a slight hiccup in, I think, the May show and the July show are actually the same one. Oh, well, that I will sort on Wednesday, because I'm back on Wednesday. Right, well, you need okay. to sort this out. Well, you don't need to. No. IT needs to sort yes. it out. We'll get that so sorted. I will, I will have words with them. I should exactly. go there with get my up there. We have ways of making you get it right. Notice I dress to match the cushion, you see? You always look a vision. You see. You do. Anyway, enough about you. We need to Come talk on, about this product. fabulous fabric here. Yes. Uh, we have our fourth. Where's my fourth fat quarter? There it is. You You've been playing with it, haven't I you? Did, did. Uh, so these are our fat quarters. So you get all of these, four of these for eleven sixty nine. That strikes me as a very good price. That's what does that work price. out per fat quarter? It That's less than three quid, yes. isn't it? It's like two pounds yes. eighty or something. Two ninety three. Well, you get all of that. We'll make one of those. It will make the other cover I have, which is somewhere on the floor. It's on the floor, Jenny. And you can make the stripey piping. So, you know, you have no problems whatsoever. I love the materials you've picked like as well. Them. I've got to say, they're yes. really, really nice sort of autumnal mm. shades, mm. perfect for this time it of year, aren't they? anywhere. That, that, I thought, was such a lovely, bright cushion, and yet it wasn't overpowering, it wasn't too patchwork. No. So uh, mustardy and autumnal. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you'd like to go for those, the back quarters there, eleven pounds and six nine pence the price. Sorry, I haven't folded them back up very you well. Haven't, have you? I haven't, Jenny. Mm. Bad pupil. If you did the floppy five thing. Uh, two nine zero. Oh, whatever the item number was there. Uh, right, the next one for you, if you'd like to give this, this is the pie pig. See, Jenny picked it up, so they changed the uh, details straight away. Uh, 30 pounds and 49 pence is your price on this one. All important to have the perfect piping to yes. put the perfect yep. edging on your cushion. Yes, very much so. Because and it I just makes it look so much more professional. And it, well, the nice thing about this piping is it doesn't do what's known as roping. What's roping? Roping is when you can actually see what the cord is made of. Uh, I think it's a cushion that's got roping on it. But sometimes you buy cheap cord. When you put the piping on, you get what's known as roping. You can actually see the zigzag lines 
um, the woven lines of the piping cord. And okay. this, this doesn't do roping. So this is kind of like your professional yes. piping yes. that we have for you here. It's a lovely... Because of the way... When you look at it, they've made it out of structure that goes like a weave on top. Yes. On the cheaper cord, it's like a spiral cord that goes round. And you actually get these spirals showing through. So if you see this kind of crisscross, you know that this is yes, a decent piping. It doesn't, doesn't piping. do roping. Uh, so 291 is your item number on that one if you'd like to go for it. Now the zips, I've got to say, I loved your little zip techniques. Thank you. No, I did. I loved the bit when you like pulled... Well, you know, you pull this down past the bit yes, so you can then it. get it all the way yes. to... That makes yes. sense and to me. Things, it, it makes life so, so, so easy. Yeah, but it's the little easy. things like that that maybe people don't yes. always realise. Uh, three of the zips, obviously for your cushion, but it could be for your dresses, it could be for your skirt, it could be for a very large pair of flies. It's entirely up to you. Uh, six, <laughs> well, you know, needs <laughs> must when the devil drives. Uh, six pounds and 29 pence is the price on this one. Two nine one oh nine five. Good quality zips, yes, Jenny. they are good quality zips. And they will wash well. I mean, yes. they, they will stand washing and they're going to tumble dry. They won't melt. You can iron them. They don't melt. I think that's a don't melt, which, of course, is very important. No, yes. yes, you don't want a melted zip, do you? Uh, 6 29 your price there. Uh, the the accessory pack. Now, we'll just go through this again. Uh, we start with these quilting pencils, so not any old pencil. No. Don't whip no. out your HBs or whatever. They need to be quilting pencils. Uh, why these in particular? Right, I like those because you've got light, medium, dark. So on your dark fabric, you use the white one. On your medium fabric, you use the yellow one. And on your light fabric, you use the grey one. You've also got the template pencil, which will write on all sorts of plastic. Okay. So, you know, you can write on your plastic template, plastic, perhaps you want to mark something up, that's what you want to write on. Then we have our secret agent, a disappearing mm -hmm. ink pen. Love it. in about two hours. But that's brilliant, though, because it doesn't even mark on no, anything. No, it doesn't. Uh, then we have these. These are our fabric grabbers. Now, these you don't put on the fabric, you actually put them on your templates. Yes, I think that's a misnomer. They should really say anti-slip discs for rulers. Yes, they should, shouldn't they? Templates, which would be much more better. Though I do like saying grabbers. the word grabbers, it must be said. Uh, we do have the pins as well, our flat head pins. You saw Jenny use these and why they are so brilliant. 291103 for your flower head pin bundle there including everything that you see there. A couple of other items as well. We have yes. our essential elements bundle for you Jenny. Now you yes. did use this in I the did. actual demo yes, there. Uh, so. Why is this so important? What do we right. get? If you are beginning patchwork you need these two things. That will give you your square up to 12 and a half inches. Just stand out of the way. So if you, you wanted to make it larger for some reason you can always use the ruler as well to extend the size of the square. Because this is a Massive ruler, the one that you it get with this as well. I mean, anyone starting patchwork, I bang on about this constantly. You need one of those and one of those. You can then acquire all the other tools because this will do your big square and your length of strip. It is indeed essential, hence the name. £44.99. Yeah. That's on Flexi Pay as well, which means that you can actually pop other things into your Flexi Basket as well. Um, also, we have, of course, our rotary cutter. Yes. Our rotary cutter with an extra blade and a